Sunday q and I thought I'd do that as a different start. I always say hello all or hello everybody. I thought I'd mix it up a bit. Yeah. A bit loud for Sunday, isn't it, really? So, right, here we are in the office. In the office. In the office. In the office. Yeah, it's a work in progress. Um, spoke so sun was round on Friday, and we now have. Da, 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 da. Well, that's the picture of the table. That thing there. Uh, there, I'm good with cameras. Which is uh, electric. That'll. And. What else have we got? Something interesting around somewhere. What are these? We have an Ethernet cable. It's all work in progress. The Ethernet cable is brilliant because it can plug in the side of the laptop. Wonderful. Super fast broadband from the office. Doesn't solve the phone problem. So the phone problem means that um, I kind of need one of those little sky mini boxes or if anybody else. Question for the wise guys. Let's jump ahead. What do I do? I want to get internet calls in the office. So what I really need is something that the internet cable, the ethernet cable plugs in in here, which gives us like a, a magical radio frequency kind of hippie scarves. I was up in the hospital all night. I think I'll have this. I'll get to that in a minute. Um, sort of Wi-Fi stuff. So you come in here, you turn your laptop on, you turn the pooter on, the phone works on Wi-Fi calls, everything's lovely, everything's crystal clear, let me know. Uh, as for the hospital, if anyone's concerned, um, yeah, I went and got my blood pressure checked again Friday. Uh, it's been high, as I said in my last video, and um, still too high. And the guy says, you better go and get this one sorted. So they put me in for the same day emergency care, the SEDEC place. I was in there at half six. I got out at one o'clock in the morning. I can think of better things to do with me Friday night, but health is health. You know, better than not waking up in the morning, isn't it? Um, I went through all the tests, cardiogram, all this bish bash bosh, uh, sort of show me chest, put the, the things on, weighed me did me bloods, all that, which is good because they're doing on renal and hepatic. And the guy came up to me at half past 12 in the morning, the doctor, and went, why are you here? <laughs> which in fairness is the news that you want to hear. What you don't want to hear is, Mr. Coth, we're taking him in for an operation right away, <laughs> you know, kind of thing. But I said, my blood pressure's too high. The, the doctor said, I've got to come down here. And he went, well, what is it? And I said, I think he measured it at like sort of 160 over 109. And the doctor went, lots of people are that. <laughs> okay, but they give me another little tiny pill to go along with a big pill. So I've now got big pill, little pill. And I've got to, I've got to get myself one of them monitor things and check it. And hopefully, sooner or later, it will go down to, I don't know, 140 over 80 or what it's actually supposed to be. I think my dad, my, my aunties were dead by the time they were my age. Um, my um, my dad was kind of um, I think he was on blood pressure. What what we got him? Read the book. Um, I'll do your link. Um, I haven't even started on that yet. Uh, yeah, so better take the tablets than the alternative, I think. So, but anyway, so lots of work in progress. My health is work in progress. Hopefully soon I can get back to the gym. Soon to be the Batcave. Spoken to Ian this morning, um, and also um, get this place sorted. Get the stuff is working with a desk, a more comfy chair. This chair's okay, it was free. I got it off some people at the warehouse. It's kind of okay, but um, yeah, I would like a nice sort of comfy captain's chair type thing, and a maybe a little sofa to sit on. An argument can be made, you're at work. You're not supposed to be comfortable. You're supposed to sit on a spike. It's work. It's supposed to be miserable. If it wasn't miserable, it would be called fun. It wouldn't be work, it would be fun. Uh, but yeah, so anyway, work in progress. That all aside, why am I here? Oh yes, Sunday Q&A, <laughs> let's get started. So I'm gonna crack off with one of our regular contributors, my mate, Tiffy O'Son Cornwall. And Tiffy says, as an introduction this is, Pete, as one of your, probably one of your longest subscribers, I remember in your first loot and van, I watched your video by the Saints man back of the holidays, and I think you had a good point. He said, what about, yeah. He said, you advertise vans joining the CX, but it's only fair you should advertise more 18-ton lorries to join the CX in the Dunstable area. Both you and him do other great videos. Uh, don't take this the wrong way, hope you're well. Mate, I don't take it the wrong way at all, and yes, you are 100% right. And in fairness, I do. I've said, if you're running 
the best vehicle to run on the Courier Exchange is an 18 ton truck, DAF in my opinion, because they're workhorses, double curtain side with a tuck under tail lift. That way, and a pump truck. That way you can do 85% of the jobs. A lot of it's forked on, forked off, which is much easier than running in a van. And if you've got a tuck under tail lift, you can back onto a bay, which will cover most of your work. But running lorries is involved. And now I'm running lorries, I am finding out just how involved it is. What's this bill? Transport manager. What's this bill? Parking. What's this bill? Fuel. Fuel? Jesus. What's this bill? Drivers, you know, all that thing. But if you're running on your own, still, the best vehicle to be in is an 18 ton truck. But you can't just jump into one. You need to get an operator's license. You need to get parking. You need to get a transport manager. They're five, six hundred pound a month. It's involved. If you just want to run in a van, the best van you can run in, if you don't want to get involved in transport managers, taco cards, driving hours, then you get a Luton double curtain side, or a single curtain side even will do the trick with a tail lift, because that will do most of the jobs on the exchange. The trick for me is finding the vehicle that does most of the jobs. That way, if you're in Southampton and you're coming back to Dunstable and there's a job for a medium wheelbase, but it's taking you door to door, you think I'll have it anyway. Same with the trucks. Trucks are better, they've got more space, you can have a bed in them, they're more fun to drive, you're, um, you've got a better driving position, you're, 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 you command the road, people move out of your way, and once you drive it, I prefer trucks. I would much, drive, much rather drive and run in a truck than a van, and I recommend anybody does exactly the same. And as for the areas, you know, anything in the triangle from Milton Keynes going all the way up to Derby and all the way across kind of like the Manchester and kind of that kind of little ghosty kind of area, it's a great area to run in but it's involved. You do you. Right, so that's the introduction. Uh, question of the week. We're steaming ahead on the time here, aren't we? This one this week goes to Target Man 18 He said, I would be interested to know if you could do CX jobs with a car towing a box trailer, almost a Luton size van. I'll give you the short answer now. I wouldn't recommend it. When they book a van, they want a van. They don't want an ice cream van. They don't want a camper van that the two of you have actually managed to convert the back so you can stick a box in. They're booking a van. They don't want a version of a van. They want a van. But we'll stick that one as a question of the week. And thanks for asking, Target Man. So this week's video, the main one, is on, um, oh, I say now I'm in the, in, in, in the office, the Stoffice, or the, uh, the um, What's the, what's the barn office, the boffice, the boffice, the man office. I don't know, I'm making these names up as I go along. Um, yeah, so I'm trying to, and I will, but the thing is, now I'm out here in the afternoons, I can do some videos like I promised you I'd do. How to post a job on the phone, how to post a job on the, um, on the computer, because I'll have time. And I'm in the afternoons, I've got time. But, you see, in the morning I'm busy, because that's when it all goes loopy, between about, oh, depending, I mean, sometimes it's six, sometimes it's seven, till about... 11 o'clock ish then the afternoon is kind of the period just making sure everything runs fine but in the afternoon i can't make any noise because i'm in the house but when i'm in the office i can make some noise I'll have a little disco put a ball up get my roller skates on roll a disco that's not roller skates that's me on a chair just in case you wondered uh right leachy 100 so i'm definitely sleep deprived <laughs> sorry uh leachy says I use a desktop version of my phone if I'm going somewhere and I need to see if there's any jobs that would take me back home. I always used to. I always found the desktop version. I did a video on this, the link. It's important. And I actually labelled it as one of the most important videos I've done out there because I found myself once in Norfolk and I couldn't get a job coming back off the app. And then I went on the desktop version and there were two jobs on there, which had unfortunately just sold. But I thought if I'd have seen them, why, now, I don't know whether the desktop jobs on the app, they, they now married up, or sometimes there's jobs on the desktop that you don't see on the app. I believe they're both married up, but um, at the time it was an important video. So yeah, I get where you're going with that one. Also, for the desktop version on the phone, you can put in where you're going to. You can do it on return journeys and stuff like that, but I find the desktop thing easier. We might drill into that in more detail. Uh, let me know if you want to stick some questions in. Uh, White Man in Advance says, is isn't calling the customer back about making sure the shipper always wins. Surely shippers should quote the price they think it should cost plus their margin and then either take the extra profit or get it cheap and take the hit when it becomes expensive. This is business. Sometimes I have to take a hit by taking the job on the cheap to get home 
or in certain areas because it's better than leaving empty. I say no to anyone who asks me to wait to confirm. Yeah, he's, he's dead right, absolutely. Um, it is a little bit, it, the problem that you, I find you got, and I do recommend it if anyone ever rings you and says, can you just hang on for 10 minutes while I ring the customer? You need to have a polite way of saying no. Why should I? You're asking me to just sit here for 10 minutes. And if I get three bids in the next 10 minutes that say that uh, they want a job and I say, no, I'm sorry, I've committed myself to one that might be a case. And they ring you up, well, a lot of the time they don't even ring back. Or they ring you back and say, sorry, it's not going ahead. You've lost potential money. Well, you've lost actual money for potential money. And that doesn't, that doesn't make sense. It's the way our game works. Shippers have got to understand this. If they're in a position where they're not au fait with what their customer's prepared to pay and they're not saying yes, then they've got to go to the... I mean, what you'd have to do is go to the customer, my point of view, and go, look, I've got a guy at the moment. I believe, you know, do you want it now? Or you'd have to ring the customer back and go, ever so sorry, you know, I said I could get you a van in. Unfortunately, that van's just gone now or that van's broken down, which A, makes you look like an amateur and B, makes you look like a proper Charlie. The way you find a way around this, I don't know. I don't tend to do that much end user, to be honest with you. I tend to focus on getting the lorries booked out. But um, yeah, if you've got your own customers, you've got your own trucks, it's not an issue, is it? You just send your customer into your truck and it's not a matter of what you know, you know what you're going to pay. That's the way forward. Uh, Nick says, um, be interested to see from your side of view how bids come in. I want to do that, Nick. I just don't know because the problem that I've got, I could show the bids, but I don't want to show who's bidding because it's a bit like when you're showing this stuff, you know, kind of... If I show the job and who's, buying, who's posting it and then I show the job of how much the bids are going and what it's going to sell for, then that customer, then that, that shipper could get back to me and go, well done, you've just told everybody what I'm prepared to pay on that job. Sometimes I get that job off cheap. Now everybody now everybody knows, because everyone in the world watches this channel, it's fantastic, it's like Channel 5, best way forward. Um, um, yeah, well done, you've just told everybody what I'm prepared to pay. So it's a bit of a tricky one. I might have to try to do it, but sort of blur out who's putting the bids in and who's putting the job on. I'm not quite sure, but I do want, I'd like to show a bit more transparency, a bit more, you know, everyone says it's oversubscribed and everybody puts in really cheap bids now. I am not getting tons of bids and I am not getting really cheap ones. And I would like to show that, but I've got to work out a way of doing it so that I don't um, compromise any of my shipper friends or any of my van friends. So that's what I'll, I'll work on that one. But you've got plenty to be getting on with in the meantime. Uh, again, White Man Van here says, um, Oh no, I've got a leechy first. He said, would love to know why some shippers still want to post POD and invoice. I had one a few weeks back that wanted me to email the invoice and to place to one place and the POD to another. It's a nose, isn't it? Well, I mean, I've got a system now. We, I will go, we'll come on to this again. I'm, gonna, I'm writing all these down. I'm going to cover these. What I used to say is, print the invoice, post the POD. Do it standard, that's the way we do. I don't recommend that anymore. I think your best thing to do is to scan the POD onto the system and then email it over and put in your terms and conditions. We now send everything by email. If you want a POD, then you have to request it. Um, and a few people do request it. And as a shipper, I'm now starting to learn who requests it and um, getting in the habit of going, oh, I've just done a job for Brian's Couriers. He needs hard copies. I had one guy the other day and he said, because uh, we do, we keep all it. What I do is I keep all the PODs. And if someone requests it, then I go back and find it and post it. It's easier than posting and easier and cheaper than posting every single one. Um, and I said to the guy, I went, really? You still need one? He said, yep. Yeah. He said, you know the most frustrating thing? I post my POD. I give the, post, the paper copies of PODs to my customer and they put it in a box. So he, he wasn't mucking me about. He was going, I need these bits of paper to get paid. It's just the way they work. That's great. It's just the way we work, but I need them. And if they need them, they need them. That's part of the rules. Again, when I get more au fait with this, I'll... I'll... Sounds like a Harley. Uh, when I get more au fait with this, I'll get into it, but I'm going to start trying to cover these things. I think it's important. Uh, White Man Van, as I say, says, can you see if drivers are trying to co-load with your permission, i.e. they've got a load on board or uh, without your permission? Um, and they've accepted one later. You can't see that they're trying to colo, but what you can see is where they're going. So you kind of, you look at, and first of all, it's like, 
you know, you can see what time they're supposed to be arriving. You said you're supposed to be there between half 11 and half 12. You've rocked up at half past one. Why is that? And then it's a bit like, right, okay, you're going from Milton Keynes to Luton. You should, you were loaded at half one. You should have been there at half two at the latest. You're now, according to the tracker, at half past two in Oxford. Why are you in Oxford and not in Luton where you're supposed to be? You can see that. He's ring up and stuff going, what's going on? If you need to. So, but again, when I get better at that, there'll be a video. Of course there will. Um, Baz in a van says, hello Pete, he says, uh, using the app on the phone. I use the CX for invoicing, but I found the app, at the, but I found that the app or me at the end of the job, I haven't set the invoice for the job, only to find out they haven't paid, you know, because they hasn't, haven't received the invoice. And he also said another thing, uh, another issue, the CX is quieter than it used to be. Uh, 300, well, 3,165 jobs um, in a seven and a half ton from last year was three, 9,000 jobs. So that's a third of the jobs. Maybe, I don't know, I'm still kind of, I haven't got two for Monday in fence. Monday was a struggle, but then I had the hospital thing going on. So I kind of, uh, I was over there. Uh, as for that, we'll probably get into that. Let's kind of create invoice at the end. Something I'll have to look into, I'm sure, but I will keep this piece of paper and I will get you all covered, I'm sure. Right, how are we doing? Ah, right, now we're on to the Stoffice. Stoffice, we're in the Stoffice. So, yeah, I think we can make this work. The we keep saying I need to knock it down and rebuild one. I don't need to rebuild it. It's fine. A little bit of wood needs replacing. That window needs replacing. A bit of wood. We'll be okay. Rained heavily this morning. Still dry. Still good. Ah, Shane Hardy said, the stuffish, the stuffish, the, 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 uh, the shipping shed. I like that. I actually like I the shipping shed. Sounds better. Hmm. You might change it to that. The ambient hut. Drink some water. Uh, yeah, the shipping shed. That might, that might work out. Um, he said, just need some man cave style retro signs. Well, what we're working on at the moment, we've got um, DAB radio, which was a thing from your mind. I've got a camera up there. You may just be able to see it there. Bits and pieces. We'll start to appear, I'm sure. Get some art, get the wife to draw something. I've got, yeah, I've got a sign, like an old map of Bedford. Get that frame. Yeah, I'll work it out. You know, we're gonna. Uh, oh, nice. Hello, mate. Says work locations means, means, means speech impediments. Stoffice. Of course they do. Uh, Nick says decisions, decisions. Can't beat Facebook Marketplace for, for bits. Yeah, I will have to work that one out. Kids better at that kind of stuff than me. So, yeah, but I want to get a little sofa thing in here and a more comfy chair. So, I don't know why the one upstairs is all big and padded. It's got Chesterfield stuff on it. And this is just a chair. It was free. So, I ain't knocking it. But, yeah, we'll get onto it. Um, Casey Curious says, uh, wow, I think you need to watch your blood pressure. It may be still too high. Take a holiday, life is short. Problem is, take a holiday, the bills keep coming in. So all the time I'm on holiday, I'm worried about what the bill's going to be when I come back. And when I come back, they're dearer. So it doesn't help. It's a nice idea. Besides, where are you going to take a holiday to? I'm going to go to Italy, where it's 45 degrees. Alternatively, I believe that sooner or later, you'll be able to get space shuttle missions to the surface of the sun. I think I'll stay here. I'll stay here and I'll try to learn to take it easier a little bit. I'll try. Um, Gareth Rice Bike, he says, look after yourself, Pete. He says, taking care is more important. It's get yourself a dog. Um, for the shed garden, two decent walks a day. Gentle cardio is what you need. We've got four cats, mate. <laughs> I can't stroke. Dog's going to be an issue. Although when I was using the gym, which is going to be the Joffice or the Bat Cave, when I get that one up and running, um, and I think I might try and go back to the gym, but I might try and go back a little bit more. Not so heavy, you know. I've got a sneaking suspicion I'm not. I'm not 25 anymore, and I'm not going to get the sort of Superman body anymore. So, you know. So uh, yeah, we might just go back to a little bit, little bit of bike. Kaylee Cohen on the old bike and um, do the weights, but not too heavy. Not kill myself, maybe. We'll see. Uh, also, uh, Gareth Rice Bike says, uh, start insulating the shed ready for winter. When I did parcel deliveries, I came across a lot of people working out of sheds in their gardens. That's going to work fine. I have faith. I'm sure it's going to be lovely. I'll get some little fairy lights there for Christmas. Yeah, you know, I'll look like a redneck. Don't. Yeah, don't do that. Get off. Running over the cable. That cable's 60 metres long. So I have to go from the middle of the house, along the house, all the way along the back of the house, and all the way along the garden. Better not break it. All uh, right, and now on to the wise guys. Got some questions on the wise guys this week. Uh, Steve Campbell, hello mate. He did text me a couple of times. I'm sorry, I didn't, you know, I did reply he was in Dunstable. I don't always get a chance, Steve. It's kind of all go like, you know. Um, 
He says, now about this 12 hour thing, he says, I'm a tramper. No way on earth can you legally drive 12 hours in a day. Max is 10 hours. Uh, planners can't plan for you to exceed nine hours of driving 13 hours of duty. So when you're planning, you can only plan for nine hours even though you know that people can drive for 10 twice a week and they can work for 15 hours, they're only allowed to plan for 13 hours. The extended hours are down to the driver to use at their discretion for the benefit of them and not the company. Fridays, I really get close, close to nine hours driving. There are no separate rules of trampers. They are all the same. Yeah, I thought you were, I thought that was right. So please know that I do know what I'm talking about sometimes. As for Fridays, we work on the same principle. I want to get the drivers done by two and get them home. It's Friday, Poets Day. I'm not going to say what that is. <laughs> <laughs> right. Steve also says, he says, can you spy on a company for me uh, to see what kind of feedback they get? I was supposed to be on annual leave this week, but you had to pull in for a driver. Of course I can, Steve. Mes me message me what the company name is and I'll have a look for you. Uh, domain name guy who is still, uh, who is forging the way on the channel for uh, computer vans that drive themselves. Uh, Iveco trucks are now using radar and lidar which I thought was a supermarket, but clearly not, uh, to steer Iveco Arctic Class 1 trucks and testing has begun in Germany. Iveco's, check it out on the YouTube. YouTube is a wonderful channel full of edificating people talking about wonderful stuff. Just not here. Miscellaneous. <laughs> 20 point, what, 21, just call it 21. Uh, Shane Hardy says, I would suggest looking at, oh yeah, because I'm talking about recording the screen recorder thing. I would suggest looking at Obs Studio to record the screen on your computer. Um, uh, Markle Therapist says, P uh, in order to show the computer screen, you can download screen recording software to record the screen simultaneously. Yeah, as for like Obs, I've got one. A few people, I mean, Godzilla said, DU recorder and bandy cam records. Um, yeah, um, I've got one. I don't know what it was. It was one of those frustrating things where they said, you know, Google, best free ones. So you Google it and it's free, but it's free for three minutes. If you call three minutes, one, one second, it doesn't work anymore. Besides, I need more than three minutes. So then I went on another one. And then, no, you can record it on game Xbox Plus. No, you can't because that doesn't record a screen. And then you go, and, and in the end, I went, oh, I'm going to buy one. I'm just going to buy one. And it's like, oh, we want so much a month, how much a year? No, I'm not paying you a month, just buy me one. And one of them, it was like 16 quid. I'll have it. It's turned out to be 19 pounds, it's plus fat. Of course it was. So I bought that, and then the other one, I knocked it off, and they kind of went, oh, you're knocking it off? Do you want a special offer? You could have offered me that straight away, couldn't you? Still too dear. So I've got one up and running. I will get the hang of it. Um, as for the market therapist, you can record the screen. I did actually set a camera up behind me so you can see me doing the thing at the screen. Thought it might look nice, but the screen was just too white. So I guess you've got to turn the balance down or something like that. It seems to work pretty well at the moment with just one camera on me, one camera on the screen. But when we get the hang of it in the shop office, we'll get it all set up. It'll be like the BBC. It'll be like a recording studio in here. I'm going to go and get some egg boxes. I'm going to stick them over the wall, just like Zamo did in Grand. Not Zamo was it? It was the, the other kid in Grangeil. Contemporary reference the 18 to 25 year olds there. Oh, by the way, if anyone's ever seen Blinded by the Light, there's a bit in Blinded by the Light where um, they show him setting up Luvic Radio, which was Luton Six Form Radio. He didn't. And the reason I know he didn't is because I did. I was the bloke who created the radio station in our sixth form college, the one that was on the Blinded by a Light video. Me and my mate Hamish, I sat outside Mr. Hillam's office, who was the vice principal, every break time, every, every lunchtime, I sat outside his office and say, what's happening today? What's happening today? One day he came in, he saw me and he went, oh, Peter, not today. And I went, okay, fine, no problem. Back tomorrow. And I just sat there every single day until I got it. And we got it. It was good. Uh, give me something. Don't lunch house. Uh, and finally, as we're getting onto it, uh, kind of, you know, we've done the bit on the polytunnel. Shane Hardy said, Pete, and it's leafy tomato plants. Yes, another interesting background for Q&A. Well, we've got the office at the moment, which will change. And in conclusion, uh, uh, against all for against all, against and trans or something, says, nice weed to grow back in there. Thought about it. You know, I, I did study back in my earlier days. I haven't done it for a very long time. But I thought, well, you can. Apparently, it's, at least, it's not illegal to grow it. It's only illegal to sell it. Having said that, the wife's given up fags this week. Wonderful. I mean, I give up smoking, oh, in my 30s. 
because I'm rubbish at it. I look very poor with a cigarette. She's given up three days. She read the Alan Carr book, not the um, the, the, the comedian, the other guy. Um, and yeah, she said, that's it, I'm done, so I'm brilliant. Uh, but yeah, on the subject of uh, smoking and sort of that kind of stuff, what do you do if you see a spaceman? Park, man. On that note, I think that's Sainsbury's. I think my delivery's here. Right, no, it's not, it's my neighbor. Uh, right, so Q&A. Here we go. Uh, see you next week. If I'm not dead by then, join a Pestbury Society. Um, but yeah, hopefully the pills will start working, the office will start working, the broadband will start working, and I can do some more videos showing you how to take care and take money. <laughs>